Well, I can tell you, I never saw this one coming. Well, welcome to Finding America. It is really great to see you here. Well, this past weekend, Chris and I met up with Jason at a very small park that was once the site of a very old school. Well, the spot didn't quite pan out the way we wanted to, but we did manage to find a couple really cool items that I just had to share with you. Well, uh, this shot reminds me of Madonna, strike the pose. Yeah, <laughs> all natural for me though <laughs> <laughs> so chris is here jason's here he's on the other side of the property we're trying a place uh, jason found a spot and i'm like yeah we'll meet you there and we came up here and we're like oh we got bad news <laughs> but because we hunted this a few years ago and didn't have much luck but we thought what the heck i didn't even have an equinox back then yeah. so in the middle of the summer too yeah it was really hot we weren't that enthused back then <laughs> but i did get a high tone amongst all the garbage at this place and i got it looks to be an old brass like trophy plaque or it says second place it's really faint so i'm gonna have to wait till i get it cleaned up hopefully there's a date on it and then chris i saw him pick this up i'm like what is he doing with that <laughs> But this is actually really cool. I'll let Chris talk about this. So I'm looking at it, trying to figure out, I think it's a vacuum tube like they would have in schools yeah. to teach you how to repair them or in, replace them. Yeah, it says vacuum tube characteristics. And then it, somebody cut it and turned it into an animal trap. <laughs> actually very well. I mean, it's riveted and everything. Yeah, they took some time. That is so cool. Yeah, it is. Got, uh, moving pieces. Uh, I think that was the the shelf for the food. Oh, maybe Either that or yeah, drop the thing down. But but one other thing I noticed yeah. is that uh, Philco. It was originally made by Philco. Tech rep worldwide service. Yeah, this is probably going to be uh, 50s, maybe? 50s, 60s. So pretty cool piece. Uh, I'm gonna keep it. Yeah, yeah. Chris <laughs> has some varmints at home. Yeah. <laughs> really neat. Well, we had actually expected to spend the entire day at that spot, but it just wasn't working out there. So as we were standing around trying to figure out where we were going to go next, I suggested that maybe we should go back to the park that Jason and I were hunting in last week's episode. We'd found quite a bit there, so much in fact, that I couldn't fit it all in last week's video. So the very first three clips that you're gonna see of this were from last week's hunt. And I gotta tell you something, I know I've said this often, but I am really glad we decided to go back to that park. Well, this is kind of cool. Got a 19 and uh, about six inches this popped out. Oh, yeah. it's, it's not too shabby. Yeah. It's actually a pretty Beautiful. fancy pattern yeah. around the outside. Yeah. So, see what it looks like when we get it cleaned up. You can see where the pen was, but yeah. Nice little piece. Well, this is pretty cool because I had just dug that shaver handle right there and uh, I was running over with my coil after I filled the hole and I was getting a jumpy high tone. I pulled out a couple big rusty nails and then I got a nice green weedy and Jason and I were trying to figure out between our old eyes what date this was yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, pretty sure it's gonna be a 1910 so second year and uh, very cool yeah I love I just love early the readings. early ones yeah, yeah. The early ones are very cool so I'll take that and uh, who knows what else is here we'll keep on going nice job.
Well, just a couple feet forward and I got another signal, gave me a 17, uh, dug down and it said it was in the plug so I started wiping away the dirt and I got a pretty cool piece right here. And that is a contact for a Model T distributor. So that's pretty cool. I found quite a few Model T parts in this area and uh, I guess I have another one now. Well, Chris and Jason and myself decided to come back to that park that Jason and I were at in the last video. And I picked up right where I left off, going row by row, 15 inch coil, field two, digging through a bunch of iron. Finally got down to this thing, it was giving me a 14. It's actually a pretty cool piece. And it's gonna be the top to an old talcum uh, powder tin. And this one, wow, this might be a little different than some of the ones I found. Oh, it still has the uh, the logo for the company on the cap. That is pretty cool right there. I've never seen that before, so happy to have that. And I'll get it cleaned up and we'll see what the manufacturer is. But uh, that's a nice little find. I definitely like it. Well, I was going uh, east-west here, and uh, I barely got a 13, but then I turned and went north-south, and it was very repeatable. So I'd say about, I don't know, six, uh, maybe six inches, I guess so. Um, check it out, I got an old nickel. I'm hoping it's an old nickel. If uh, it's not, you won't see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, looky there, guys. Buffy? Oh yeah, and it's got a date. Oh, yeah. That's nice. Look at that. Oh, wow, yeah. that is really nice. That was a brand new coin when they dropped that one. Oh, man. Okay, now let's see if uh, I'll have to. Chris wears his glasses. <laughs> I leave mine at home, and Jason has them in his pocket all the time. So yeah. I'm going to hand it over to Chris. See if I can get a date. Yeah, why not? Either that, I'm going to have to get the loop out. Can you see it? Yeah. 19 something. Oh, well, Maybe. I would never guess that. So, <laughs> anyway, nice to get a buffalo. Now, I'm telling you, this park we pounded and pounded and pounded, but that 15 inch coil in the field, too, has really paid off here. I can't tell. I don't uh, know if it does. Have, oh, there it is. 35, maybe? 1935. We'll take it. Or 25? I'll take that too. <laughs> 15? That's chewy. Yeah, something with a 5 at the end. It'll look good once I get it cleaned up, but there you go. Awesome. This was a solid 20 and pinpointed way over here. Um, so, but I think what I've got. Oh, awesome. An old pair of, part of an old pair of scissors. Uh, I like old Shears. scissors. Those are nice. Yeah. Yep. That's really cool. I found uh, one pair here about uh, 50 yards from here last year, I think. Well, that's nice. That's definitely an old pair. Yeah. Early 1900s at least. So, very cool piece, man. Chris called me over. He got some uh, utensilage. Looks like it. I haven't oh, yeah. pulled it yet. But Man, we pull a lot of spoons out of here. Well, oh, it's another. It's another one. It's an iced tea Sunday that. spoon. Yeah. Are you is sure there? that design matches? Is it the same? Oh, it's just like it uh, the one Jason got. Yep. Yep. It's identical. There must have been a set they threw out. Except Jason was much more careful. He didn't damage it. <laughs> yeah, that was my fault. <laughs> Come on. Nice, man. I didn't find a back mark on his, or did I? This one has one. Oh, good. W-R or something? Maybe, well, William Rogers? Yeah, oh yeah.
Now, iced tea isn't probably something you really think a lot about, but it actually has a pretty interesting history. Now, some earlier variants of iced tea have been known previously in history, but it really made its mark on America in 1904 when it debuted at the St. Louis World's Fair. Well, it was a very interesting fair and one that I've always referred to as the junk food fair. So many tasty treats were debuted in 1904 at that fair, including hamburgers, hot dogs, cotton candy, ice cream cones, peanut butter, and yep, even iced tea. Well, it was a sweltering summer back in 1904 at that World's Fair, and people were doing everything possible to avoid a warm beverage. In fact, they were looking for a cold beverage to give them a little bit of relief from the heat. And those free samples of iced tea, well, they definitely made an impression. By 1917, Americans were all busy buying special tall iced tea glasses, lemon forks, and long-handled spoons, just like the one that Chris found. But what really made iced tea a drink of choice in America occurred in the 1920s during Prohibition. Beer, wine, and alcohol were outlawed in America. Americans now had to find an alternative to those forbidden drinks, and iced tea became the choice of millions, just as it is today. Well, next signal, give me a, there's just a little squeaker, a little bit of a 23. I dug down about six inches and uh, I got myself a weedy. So I wiped it off already. Uh, it's a 45, end of World War II. So cool find right there. Oh, something interesting in this hole. I was only getting an 11 to a 12, and I dug down and I saw it land right down here after I popped the plug. But I have no idea what it is. Must be some kind of a. Oh, it was a brooch. You can see where the pin was. It might have had a picture inside it or something, but it's very old. I like it. Definitely a cool find. Well, this one was giving me a nice 13 signal, about seven inches down. I finally got it out. I cleaned it up a little bit. These are kind of cool. A lot of people find these and don't know exactly what they are, but these are fasteners that were used on the tono or convertible tops a lot of times on Model Ts. Now, they use them on other things too, but most of the time they use them on that. And this would uh, be the downside. And then there was a... Uh, male snap that fit into the female portion here and uh, secured the top down so just thought I'd show you that in case you dug one up and we were wondering what the heck that is. Well I was swinging along going row by row when I got a really choppy signal right next to a fence post and this happened oh my gosh oh boy oh boy i think i gave these guys a heart attack <laughs> while i was having a heart attack i'm gonna tell you here's my hole it's one i'm gonna remember forever <laughs> i got a 26 chris is trying to peek oh my god <laughs> oh, looks i got a 26 and i'm pulling rusty nail after rusty nail and then it, it sort of seemed like it still wasn't giving me a good signal and it, there's so much iron in the ground so I widened the hole right here and I pushed it out. Okay guys, look at it. Oh, oh my gosh. Look what's sitting in the hole. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That is amazing. I have not touched it. Is it a Morgan? I think. Yes. Yes. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> Just touch it. Don't move it guys. I want you to feel what it, oh my gosh, it's freaking unbelievable. Feel oh how, my goodness. Go ahead, man, it's heavy. Oh, <laughs> just, man. just, oh. <laughs> <laughs> <It's lead. laughs> I don't care. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, oh that is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
Oh my gosh, what the heck? Amazing. <laughs> oh, it's got an old mint mark. It has an old mint mark. You've got to be kidding me. It's New Orleans. What? I can't this is only the third. Man. This is only the third Morgan I've ever dug. Look at this. I'm going to see if I can see a date without. 1891. Oh, awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. I cannot believe it. Holy crap. It's going to clean up beautiful. Wow. Oh my gosh, look at the imprint. That's crazy. Holy cow, I'm going to frame that. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> I can't believe awesome. it. And there with all the We were just talking about the oldest silver we've ever dug out of here was a Merc. Wow. Oh my gosh. 1891 oh. Awesome is, I know that is cool. <laughs> Holy <laughs> cow! All right, guys. Never seen one uh, dug live, man. No. Oh, I had, oh my gosh! When I saw it pop out. <laughs> oh my gosh. That is beautiful. 1891 oh. What the heck? <laughs> we don't. Oh, it was a 26, huh? And all that iron. Oh, I tell you what. Yeah, it was not giving me a silver dollar. That's why I say dig it all. And it wasn't even a good 26. Oh, look at that baby. Beautiful. Look at that baby. <laughs> oh my good lord. That's awesome. Oh, it has been, it has literally been 30, 25 to 30 years since I dug one. Look at that big that O. Gorgeous. Beautiful. Oh, I can't get enough. <laughs> I'm still shaking. They, these guys were freaking out because I was freaking out. I was expecting a plate, I'll be honest. Oh. <laughs> okay, well, I'll tell you what. It don't get much better than that, man. Yeah. Holy cow. Well, I saved all the iron that I pulled from that hole just so I could show you how it was lying in the ground. It was absolutely crazy how much iron was surrounding and masking that silver dollar. Well, that was an absolutely outstanding find, and that dollar definitely made me holler. And here's another look at all the very cool finds that were made in this episode. Well, in honor of my silver dollar, I thought I would share some awesome photographs showing just how America looked back in the day when this coin was being saved and spent. And remember, it's history that makes a find a treasure. And I can't wait to see you back here next week on Finding America.